Hey, it's Brendan at Casserole, and today I'm talking about one of the INFP stereotypes that bothers me just a little bit. Okay, a lot bit. And I'm sure it bothers a lot of other INFPs out there as well. And it's this notion that INFPs are emotionally unstable. So I want to take this stereotype, I want to put it under the microscope, then I want to take this microscope and I want to conveniently jam it down on top of the stereotype. Let's rip this thing apart. Let's examine the contents. Where do the falsehoods lie? Where does the truth lie? If there is some truth, because I think there is some truth and we're going to talk about that at the end. Okay. But first let's get into the falsehoods. So Carl Jung, the author of Psychological Types and the creator of the Cognitive Function Theory has stated himself that introverted feeling, which is the cognitive function that INFPs lead with, does not seek to respond to the emotions of other people. So INFPs, theoretically, according to Carl Jung, should appear very stoic and very neutral and almost cold when they're in a situation which causes a lot of conflict. So if you're out in public and you see an INFP, they're not necessarily going to be yelling back at somebody if somebody's yelling at them. Instead, they're either going to freeze because freezing buys them more time to think about what they're going to do or how they're going to react to the situation, or they're going to retreat. And the reason that they retreat is because INFPs are intensely private. And this leads to my second point, which is that because INFPs are intensely private, you're not going to see any sort of emotional instability. So yes, INFPs can be emotionally unstable. This isn't to say that they aren't. So emotional instability has more to do with mental health and has to do with your personality type. But INFPs naturally tend to be very private. So they're only going to share their emotions with their close ones. Now, INFPs tend to not have a ton of friends. So if you're in that inner circle and you're one of those people that gets to see that side of the INFP, well, God help you, first of all. But <laughs> realistically speaking, uh, if you are in the inner circle, um, you'll know that INFPs are very complex and complicated individuals. So the third point that I want to make here today is that a lot of the stereotypes that surround INFPs and introverted feeling in general come from types online that aren't INFPs or introverted feelers themselves. So I've noticed a lot of NT types in general who, you know, there's a large community online uh, in the MBTI community for NT types. They tend to have a blubbering sort of relationship with their FI. And I can imagine that if an NT is trying to figure out what it, being an INFP would be like, they would take their own conceptualization of FI and possibly try to superimpose it and, in, and visualize what their own personality might be like with their version of FI at the top. And they might, they might be like, oh, no way. I do not want to be like that because their own relationship with FI is sort of childlike. So when we look at our third function in our cognitive function stack, we often overestimate how strong it actually is. So INFPs of SI, we often overestimate how good we are at SI. And likewise, a lot of NT types might overestimate how good they are at FI. And so if they're overestimating how well they understand it and they try to superimpose that, they have a faulty understanding of what an INFP actually is because INFPs really understand the nuances of FI. We get all the intricacies, all the good and all the bad. So this, the fourth point that I want to make today is that thinking types can be emotionally unstable. So I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but if you've ever found a thinking type that is particularly closed-minded and you try to share your opposing opinion with them or try to present an alternative worldview for them, they can often get very upset. And I think that a lot of times thinkers tend to underestimate how much their lives are controlled by emotion. And likewise, I think that feelers tend to under underestimate how well we use logic in our everyday lives. I think there's something that INFPs do where we kind of look for biases. So if we read our stereotype online, we might say, oh, I'm an INFP, so I'm going to notice all of the things that agree with this stereotype in my own life. And I'm going to disregard all of the things that don't agree with that stereotype because maybe I just got into MBTI and I'm just really into it. So I want to talk about the truth of the situation. So there is some truth to the idea that INFPs are emotionally unstable. And I think that this comes with the fact that INFPs have a really hard time with TE and we have a hard time moving forward in life sometimes. 
and we need a lot of assistance. And this comes from loved ones often. And loved ones are the ones that get to deal with our emotions because we're private and we share these with our inner circles. So the inner circles might be like, yeah, he can be a little emotionally sta unstable every once in a while. But for the most part, the general public is not going to perceive an INFP that way. So please let me know your personal experiences in the comments. Thank you so much for watching Psycasserole. Please subscribe if you haven't yet and peace out.